Oh hi, it's been a while hasn't it? It's been six months. Well, since then, I got sentenced to Riverdale Penitentiary for six months. Now, I'm out of the pen. That gang that I'm working for is no more. I'm not in the gang anymore. That gang surrendered their flags and gone, basically. That mansion that I have, that the bank corrected it. Every single price what I took over for the gang, the bank took it back. So I only have my price. You know that place where we met? Yeah, that place can. In Riverdale. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm back. I'm out of jail. Yo. I guess I'll see you when I'm home. Hmm. Here we are at the crib, yo. Man, I miss this house. I missed it since I was a fucking way in the pen. God damn. Look at, look at me, I have no fucking weapons, I have no guns whatsoever. Shit man. Smoke a bun for the die. And what's crypto? You know what? Let's go rob someone. Let's go fucking rob. Let's go buy me a gun and fucking go rob someone, cunt. Why not, dog? Let's go rob someone's house, cunt. Huh. I need money, dog. So, may as well, right? I'm out of prison. So, may as well head to the gun store, then go up, up someone's place, yo, around here. Shit, dog, come. May as well, right? Shit! Hey, hey, I would like to buy a Glock, please. Sure, no problem. Is that all? 
yeah, basically, this is what I could do. Cool, there'll be $10. Cool, here it is, $10. Cool, have a good one. You too. <laughs> Let's go, boy. Let's go up some mankind. Fucking. Oh. Bitch ass. Fucking bitch ass cunt. Let's go rob, rob here basically. Where the fuck is the money, huh? Tell me, where the fuck is the money? Please, don't hold us. The money's in the kitchen and in the table. Good. Let's take a bitch. Let's take it, bitch. Let's take it. Which one? Which one? Which one? Please don't hold us. Let's go. The cops should be here any minute. One. One, 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 fuck! One! Sit there, there! Go, 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 go! Fuck! Never! Sit! Fuck you! Shit man! <laughs> Fuck you! I'm not going back to prison. It's your wife or my wife, dog? Fuck you! It's your wife or my wife? Shit! Go, 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 go! Fucking oh yeah, shit. Fuck. Fucking yo. -o. Shit. Get out. Get out. One. Oh fuck. Fuck you! Fuck yeah! Let's go! Oh, level is a block, can't. Fuck you! One! Shit! Fuck! One! One! Fuck! Fuck you! Huh. One. Shit! Fuck! Ah. 
Jump! Fucking Huh Fuck you Fuck! Get it, get it, get it! One! Fuck! Yo, whoa! Shit, man! Fucking go, 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 go! Fuck you! Go to hell, you feds! I'm not going back to prison, con. Fuck that, dude! You ever take my wife, or take your wife? One. One cut. One. One. Fuck. Oh shit. Fuck. There's too many of them. Well, I guess this is it for me, right? Hi, my name is Damien, I'm 15. I am the boss of the SM13 gang. I never knew my mom or my dad. Tomorrow is going to be another day of high school. Let's smoke some weed for the day and watch YouTube. Encounter. Ida Parker and Kristen Orr were kayaking off of the coast of Plymouth in 2014 when they encountered a shark. This is truly a nightmare scenario and it must have been absolutely terrifying. The pair, however, had actually set off with the intention of seeing a great white shark. And while it's likely that this is exactly what they encountered, they definitely did not expect what happened next. The two had heard of rumblings of a shark in the area that had swallowed a seal in one gulp and this is what sparked their desire to head out on this journey. While out there, however, However, the shark began to attack their kayaks. In the end, both of them made it out alive, and when their kayaks were recovered, one was found with a huge bite mark in it. In our number four spot today, we have the oldest shark attack. Considering the fact that the megalodon is said to have been extinct somewhere over two million years ago, even evidence that seems ancient to us is a lot more recent than what our current understanding of their timeline here on Earth would suggest. That is exactly why the discovery of what is speculated to be the world's oldest evidence of a shark attack is very interesting. This discovery came by way of a 3,000-year-old human skeleton that is marked with different gashes 
and puncture wounds. It is said that because of the volume of wounds, it makes it slightly easier to tell the story of what happened. This is because while researchers first believed that perhaps the wounds were caused by metal weapons, this could not explain why there were so many in certain parts of the body. Another telltale sign is how this skeleton was discovered in Japan, which at the time of this person's life, there weren't really any metal weapons at that point in history in Japan, which ruled out this theory entirely. They were also able to rule out other terrestrial carnivores, and that's when they turned to marine life to look for some more answers. Because of the time it's been, we obviously don't know what creature was involved in this attack for sure, but with the mass amount of wounds found on the skeleton, it was likely to be something large and terrifying. In our number three spot today, we have snorkeling. Robert Pamperin and a friend, Gerald Lair, were snorkeling off of La Jolla Cave in California in 1959 when Robert was attacked by a shark. It is said to have all happened quite quickly, and Gerald was alerted to the distress when he heard Robert scream. Gerald turned and saw Robert unusually high in the water, and his mask was missing. At this point, Gerald dove under, and this is when he realized exactly what was going on. There was a shark that had Robert in its mouth up to his waist. Unfortunately, there was not much Gerald could do to stand up to this absolutely massive shark that he described as larger than your average great white. Robert sadly Why did not come? survive the event, and by the time rescuers arrived, they were only able to locate one of his fins. In our number two spot today, we have the Jersey Shore. Back in 1916, during the summer season, there were five different shark attacks that occurred over the span of Don't 10 days that ended up in the deaths of four Punch people. it this in the gill. something that had been seen before in the area, which of course Don't left people understand speculating that your friend died. Why. There was a heat wave in the area during the time which led to people being out and enjoying summertime sort of activities and maybe this is the shark but in the end no one knows for sure because no one even knows what kind of shark is responsible for the attacks in the first place. Luckily this didn't go on to become a continuous trend and whatever shark this was went on its merry way That's why he died. another food source or whatever. But this series of attacks definitely kept the public on edge for the weeks and months surrounding. In our number one spot today, we have the USS Indianapolis. This is a story that has been considered the worst shark attack in history, which is definitely a horrific thing to I think about. I saw your friend died because you didn't the fight USS for him. Yo, he's dead yet. Yeah. He's that was dead because of in you. The Pacific when it was struck by a <laughs> Japanese torpedo. Dumb this had no problem cunt. tearing the ship in two, which meant that 900 sailors were now floating in the ocean waiting for rescue. Over the next five Dear days, God. nearly 600 men lost their lives due to shark attacks. I said this about the other one that was similar to this, and I'll say it again. That's either a group of sharks or a very few large, very hungry ones. From the survivors' accounts of what happened over the course of those days, it seemed like an absolutely nightmare situation. This is exactly why this has gone on to be called one of the worst shark attacks in history. Mm -hmm. Alright guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. I've been your host today. If you're not following along on our Google Earth mystery series, then I suggest you do. We've looked at mysterious censored places on Google Earth, we've looked at scary signals sent by Google Earth, and now it's time to look at some bizarre things caught by Google Earth. And believe me, it's bizarre indeed. Starting off this countdown, we have when duty calls. I mean, when you gotta go, you gotta go. You would just hope that no one was around to catch you. Don't want an old lady walking her dog to run into you, pop in a squat behind the first of questions, or maybe this weird being on a balcony in, in our eighth spot we have the it is actually appears to be this symbol in our ninth spot this guy in our ninth spot today we have the pentagram the sigil of baphomet is the official insignia of the church of satan so of course many people consider the symbol to be satanic well here we have what appears to be this symbol located on the southern shore of the upper tobol reservoir this symbol is massive. It's roughly 1,200 feet or 366 meters in diameter. Many people were wondering, what on earth is this for? Some say it's used for devil worship or sacrifices. Thankfully, it's not, but it's still something creepy. It is actually an abandoned Soviet era camp, and I believe that the lines that we see that it's appear to be engraved in the earth are actually roads. What a great design, huh? In our eighth spot, we have the aliens. Are aliens real? Do you believe in them? Well, Google Earth seems to have captured this weird being on a balcony in France. See for yourself. Now, what on earth is that? Is it a weird statue put outside to scare away the neighbors or meddling kids? The dude's face looks like it could be the Crypt Keeper from Tales from the Crypt. Did they decide to take these pictures on Halloween? Like, I have so many huh. questions. Or maybe it's a real alien. At this point, aliens probably do live among us, so 
We're all aliens. I'm an alien. In our seventh spot, we have the disposed bodies. Now, I don't know what's going on here. Was this an art project gone wrong? Did a clothing store shut down and they had to give away their mannequins? Or is this a scene from Goosebumps? There's something so creepy about these discarded mannequins. Like the fact that they're wrapped up? What if they're the works of a serial killer? I mean, think about it, okay? It's pretty clever to discard of a body that way. You wrap the cut up body parts to make it look if, like they aren't real If one to they are scented, some of them and and anyway I sent it. So get any ideas. I just have an overactive imagination. In reality, it probably just was an art project, just a very creepy one. Uh no. The guy in the trunk. Some of them are sentient. So they're dead bodies. If they were just mannequins, they wouldn't be sentient. All of them wouldn't be sentient. But some so of them are sentient, so Which I reckon they're dead bodies. And intentionally wanted to go lie down in Dumb his trunk for a bit, okay? Like, this can be used as inspiration for the fourth hangover movie. Dumb ho. We're now on our fifth and halfway mark with Handy Mandy. This next one is not PG-13, okay? As if that naked man was. But seriously, warning, the next one is Dumb ho for mature bit. audience members only. Because we got two individuals getting frisky in some alleyway. The man can clearly be seen with his pants down, and the hmm. woman's hand is in that general direction, so you get what's going on. And if you don't, you're too young to be watching this. Looks like Google is out here ruining everyone's fun. How awkward would it be not only to get caught, but having an image taken of you get caught and uploaded online? In our first <laughs> spot, we have the creepy scarecrows. Located in a field in Finland, we have what they call the silent people, which are a thousand scarecrows lined up in a field. Which poison the gas, head to bed, Let me say around. This is the computer area, lounge room, kitchen, dinner table. Over here we have the bathroom. This is my room here. No, this is the spare bedroom. This is my room. So yeah, let's head to bed. Five in the morning. Head to school, I guess, yo. <laughs> see you, See you, See you, guys. I guess my car got fucking stolen. Oh, well. No matter. Let's do this car now. Get out of the car. You're getting jacked. Get out. Let's head to school, yo. Let's head to fucking school. Move. Head to school. Okay, here we are at school. Let's go. Let's go get something to eat in the cafeteria. Then let's chill down. I don't know somewhere at the school can't. Why not? Shit. Well, fuck. Park it. Shit. Put away my gun, park it outside here. The cafeteria is there, in there, in that building there. Let's get something to eat, head out, chill somewhere. Why the fuck not? Let's go to here, dog. Smoke a bond for a day, watch YouTube, and we're cross. Huh. <laughs> Fuck cross. Plus pie. Skepticism doesn't mean it should be ruled out. Maybe this signal came from a huge astronomical event, or perhaps intelligent alien life with a very powerful transmitter and a monster that had glowing red eyes. They claimed they saw while they were cruising down a back road near Point Pleasant, which sits in rural West Virginia. Who they joined? Claimed that whatever this creature was, it rose 
rose into the air, unfolded these huge bat-like wings, and chased them as they sped away as fast as they could, totally frightened by what they had just seen. From here, stories of the Mothman continued to spread with more sightings coming in the following weeks. This story, of course, is what inspired the 2002 movie The Mothman Prophecies, which was based off of John Keel's book that told the stories of these uncanny sightings and experiences in relation to this mysterious creature or being. This is because he believes that this creature was somehow mysteriously linked to the collapse of the Silver Bridge in Point Pleasant in December of 1967. This bridge collapse took the lives of 46 people, and that included some of those who had said that they had an experience with the Mothman. Some people believe the story, others think it's just folklore and gullible people, so here I am asking, what do you think? In our number four, Your scientist, Mary Celeste. You should okay, know. I'll admit, this one's out of our lifetime. You're skeptic. I mean, you should know, you dumbass bitch. It's a classic mystery. Bitch. The Mary Celeste first set sail on November 7th, 1872, huh. with a cargo full of dumbass hoes. What happened over the next month you isn't know. quite clear, but what we do know is that on the afternoon of December 5th of the same year, another ship on the Atlantic crossing found her drifting somewhere between Azores and Portugal. You should know, you dumbass bitch. The captain bitch. of the ship Get knew this. the captain of the Mary Celeste and knew that he was a skilled and capable sailor, so he was extremely suspicious. He ordered a crew to board the Mary Celeste, and when they did, they found that the ship had been deserted, but it was in full seaworthy condition, so why had they abandoned it? So the, captain. the captain of the ship that found this derelict hmm. split his crew and sailed the Mary Celeste to Gibraltar for more investigations, but despite this, the captain, his family, and the crew hmm. of seven that were on board the Mary Celeste simply just disappeared and no one was able to move. It isn't exactly clear what they entailed, but the men say that the extraterrestrials conducted experiments on them before releasing them. Of course, many people said that the men were lying, but both of them passed a polygraph test. Polygraphs are the most accurate tool in the world, but the chance of both of them passing is a lot slimmer than if it was just one person. This has led some people to suggest that... Okay, so, have you guys heard about Tubi? It's a new streaming platform. This has led some people to suggest that perhaps they experienced some sort of combined dream. But even if that is the case, how that could have happened is still very much a myth. much a mystery. Who knows if they actually experienced something or not, and if they did, what exactly it was? In our number two spot today, we have Oumuamua. So a few years ago, scientists all agreed that we had found an object that was flying through our solar system, and it was widely agreed that it was an interstellar comet that had swung out from around another star. But upon closer examination, they realized that something was propelling it and causing it to accelerate, and this is when the debate really started, because... The university astrophysicist proposed the idea that rather than a comet, this could be an alien probe that was being pushed by a light sail, which is a very wide but extremely thin piece of material that accelerates by being pushed by solar radiation. Other scientists didn't agree with this and instead said that it's possible that hydrogen ice could have melted off of the object in a way that would mimic a rocket engine or something of that nature. But in August of last year, Avi wrote in a study that hydrogen ice is too easily heated and it would have melted off long before it reached our solar system. I guess we just have to wait it out while the scientists debate and gather more evidence to really know what's going on with this one. In our number one spot today, we have the MV Joyita. Around 5 a.m. on October 3rd, 1955, the MV Joyita set sail in the South Pacific. The voyage was meant to take between 41 to 48 hours, but by October 6th, the ship hadn't turned up at its destination. No ship or land-based operator reported receiving any kind of distress call from the crew, so a search and rescue mission was immediately launched. From October 6th to October 12th, the search covered roughly 100,000 square miles, but alas, no one nor the ship were found. Five weeks later, on November 10th, a captain of another ship spotted the Joyita more than 600 miles from her schedule. Route. The ship was capsizing and listing heavily, but it was extremely buoyant and would not sink. Despite this, however, the crew of 25 members were completely missing, and they have never been seen again. Four tons of cargo were missing from the ship, and the ship itself was in quite poor condition. The pipes were corroded, and while the radio worked, the wiring was faulty, so there was only a range of about 3.2 kilometers. 
Because of how the ship was built, investigators are puzzled as to why the crew didn't remain on the ship, as it wouldn't have sunk. But this has led them to believe that perhaps something happened to the captain, where he was killed or incapacitated, which would have left someone less experienced in charge. To this day, no one is quite sure what happened to those aboard the ship, how it capsized, or where they ended up. It is all very much a mystery. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Mystery House. This is a pretty recent weird discovery that was made in November of last year by the China National Space Administration rover U-2-2. This rover travels around the far side of the moon exploring and giving us insights into what lies beyond our point of view. This rover has been traveling through the 186 kilometer wide von Karman crater and this is when the rover ended up spotting what appeared to be a sort of Q-shaped unidentified object which is now being referred to as a mystery house. The rover is now on its way to investigate further, but we don't yet quite have the answers to this mystery. When the mystery house was first spotted, it wasn't exactly far from the rover, as it was only 80 meters away, but that does not mean the rover can get there quickly. The approach for this rover is expected to take somewhere from two to three lunar days, which is about two to three months in Earth time. This is because the rover moves quite slowly, and the path to explore this cube object is not a clear one. While we patiently wait for the answers, we can always speculate. Drop a comment down below with your best guesses, and who knows, maybe we'll come up with the next viral conspiracy theory. In our number nine spot today, we have the green gel. And mm. Greg, wow, I barely recognize you out of your guard uniform. I need $20,000 for a down payment on a piece of swamp. And green gel. Another discovery that was made by the U-2-2 <coughs> made its lunar landing in January 2019 came in August of that year. On Lunar Day 8, which began on July 25th, the rover was doing its thing, finding its way through an area that was filled with a bunch of small impact craters. On July 28th, as the team here on Earth was preparing to power down the rover for its little midday nap, which is meant to protect the machine from high temperatures and radiation from the sun, which, if you take away all that scary space stuff, sounds like the cutest little thing ever. A little rover nap. But anyway, as this thing's getting ready for its little rover nap, one member on the team was checking over some images that were taken by the rover's main camera, and that's when they spotted a small crater that seemed like it contained some sort of material that had a color and a sort of luster that was significantly different from the lunar area surrounding it. The team then changed the plans they had for the rover and decided that instead of going west, which was next on which the schedule, no they instead would take a little detour to go and check out this mystery material. The rover carefully made its way over to the crater and examined it with both its visible and near-infrared spectrometer, which is a thing that detects lights that are scattered or reflected off of the material, which helps to reveal what they're made up of. For a while, no one knew exactly what the substance was, and it was only being described as being gel-like and being a weird color. But after almost a year of more research, it was finally identified. It's rock! More specifically, rock that was melted together, most likely in the heat of impact from a meteorite. It's insane that something like that created a dark green glistening impact melt, but it's also very cool. I'm just glad we got down to the bottom of this mystery. In our number 8 spot today, we have Orange Colored Moon. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. This wasn't exactly found on the far side of the moon. I know, I know, I get it, you're upset, but I just truly thought it was so cool. I really wanted to share it with you guys, so bear with me. All the way back in 1972, Apollo 17 astronaut and geologist Harrison Schmidt was exploring around the Taurus Littrow landing site when he stumbled upon some orange-colored soil. It was a completely unexpected find, and one that they weren't quite sure about. What was causing this soil to get its orange color, and why was it different from all the other soil around it? Luckily, especially since it's been so long, they've been able to look more into it, and there are actually some answers to this moon mystery. After more research, lunar geologists were able to conclude that the orange soil happened as a result of an explosive volcanic eruption that occurred over 3.64 billion years ago. That's so cool! This orange soil exists because of molten drops spraying out from an awesome lunar volcanic eruption billions of years ago. Space never fails to absolutely amaze me. I'm starting to think that geologists have the coolest job in the world, by the way. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Tsiolkovsky Crater. 
This is obviously a crater, and it has been named after the Russian scientist Konstantin Tsiolkovsky. It was originally discovered on photographs that were sent back to Earth from the Russian spacecraft Luna 3. This crater is a large impact crater that lies in the southern hemisphere, but you might be sitting there thinking, there's a lot of craters on the moon, so what may I'm talking out of character for a second. I forgot where bloody Riverdale is based in, so I'm gonna say it's based in Ukrainian or whatever that country is called. So, yeah, okay, three, two, one. Action. Let's pause it, I guess, can't. Head to bed. Wake up in the morning. Tomorrow is Saturday. Nice. Fuck yeah, it's a weekend tomorrow. Yo, my crib. My car is down this way, dog. Fuck. Gang wife, I'm back, baby. Yeah, but uh, I don't know why I said I'm back. I never gone nowhere. I'm, I'm me. I'm here right now. Shit. Head back to the crib. Who hey, boss? Hey, boss. Hey guys and girls. Huh. See boys. See boss. See guys and girls. Still another car, yo. I don't know how I'm so. I don't know how I survived that dog. Like shit. I don't know how I fucking survived that dog. Shit, man. Yo. Give me that car, bitch. You're getting jacked. Get out. Get the fuck out, con. What did you say about capitalism? Huh? <laughs> that fucker? What? What bitch? Bitch ass? Fuck out capitalism. Move! Can't see him driving there. Huh! <laughs> Move, you dumb bitch! Can't you, can't you see him driving here, dog? Oh, fuck! Move! Move! Hey, two! I need to bend this car. So I did steal it, can't. So I need to abandon it right here. What? Come here. Come here. Come here. Not you, I'm sorry. I'm sorry.
What did you say to me? Huh? Shit. Bitch Fuck you. Yo! Chill! Here can Chill! Here! Push pie! Have a bomb for day!